Dahl, Shane Bruce, Resto Mod Daisy. Today we're going to show you what an actual fire blue looks like and the process we use to do it. Well, the first thing you need, of course, is a piece of prepared steel. Now, in this case, we're going to be doing a uh, Daisy uh, number 111 model 40. This is an older gun, first generation style, not the uh, 4142 production, but something after the war. And as you can see from the, uh, the steel here, this gun didn't have the nicest life. It's got quite a bit of pitting in it in the receiver area. And we'll mold, rule on down the uh, barrel here. Now this responded well to treatment. We basically hit it with some hand files, a little bit of sanding, and a wire wheel to get as good a look to it as we could. It's never going to be perfect, but it's going to look a lot better here in a minute or two. So this is bright steel. Once you've got your surface prep done and wiped it with acetone or a suitable degreaser, it's time to grab your propane torch, I like this kind, with a big bottle, and turn it on. Now it's going to get a little noisy. So what we're going to try to do here is adjust our torch. We don't want it blazing, blazing hot. We want it about like that. And we want the tip of the torch out here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to dry off the work. I know it sounds odd after you hit something with acetone and you've cleaned it and degreased it and wire wheeled it a million times, you still need to run whatever latent moisture is on the surface off the surface. And as you can see, as we move down the tube, there's a little bit of a shift, a little change, and that is actually moisture burning off. So we go to the other side and we repeat the process. And once we get this done, we'll be ready to start our fire bluing process. All we're doing right now, see how it chases that little shady line? That's just running moisture off the barrel. All right, so now we've got it hot enough to where she's beginning to smoke. That means there's no moisture left. And this is how I do it. I like to pick a spot, get my torch on it, and watch for the change. There we go. A little bit of a color roll happening. Now it's completely normal for any leftover residue of uh, oil or grease on the inside of that receiver to start smoking off. That's uh, another reason why you always want to have some ventilation going on, especially if you're doing this on an inside place. And you can see how that color roll starts? That's the oxide coat we're looking to put on the, the uh, steel. Right now, it's kind of a light blue, but as we get further along, it'll darken. So basically, you just pick that up and you move that color line down the work. And that tells you that you're getting in the right temperature zone to get a dark, dark blue. Eventually, it'll go from a, an interesting purple, straw, straw purple, to a dark blue, to a light blue, and then it's time to move on. It's always interesting to watch as it creeps up the steel. Now the temperature of the tip is where it's hottest, so that's basically where you want to focus your energy. She's starting to smoke pretty good now. But as you can see, it's basically creeping up the steel line. You don't ever want to get this stuff to the point where you're seeing a cherry red. If you've got it that hot, that's way too hot. You want it at about 550 or so to get the blue color you're looking for. So you just basically, since you're working on a big piece of steel and you're not doing it all at one time, you're doing piecework on this, you just kind of watch your flow and roll it down. Not the hardest thing in the world to do, but it is something that takes some time. So watch your progress. You don't want to get a oh, flame out. <laughs> now one thing about fire blowing is you do not have to finish the whole job at once. You're walking this along to get to a desired heat range. Now she's a smoking her really good now. Things are moving along nicely. I can still see my color band. Oops, don't want to get too close. As the, ste as the steel heats up, you'll see that oxide color shift. And then if you look back down the barrel where we've already been, you'll notice that it's a pretty nice blue fairly uniform. There will be some color variations. That's one of the things that I like 
about fire blue. It's not a chemical process, it's a heat process. And there is some variation in how the heat's absorbed and when it's absorbed. Oh, we're fixing to get a smoker here, flamer. We're gonna kick the afterburner in here in just a minute. Making nice progress. Now we're getting down to a area where you've got actually two pieces of steel. So it's going to take a little longer to get the, the roll like we want it. We want to make sure we get that nice and good. All right, so we finished the walk down the first side. Oh, look at that. We should have brought some hot dogs. All right, now we're going to start now. Uh, before we start on this side, roll on over here and get a color shot. You'll see how this is more of a gold and purples and silvers. And when you get up here to the muzzle, you can see the real, you know, just really how much color play you got. It makes me want to have more control, but I don't have a big furnace cab. Yeah, not yet anyway. Maybe one day. All right, so now we're going to do the back side because we really do like it when the steel looks the same or is uh, more compatibly the same. So we're going to roll up to the top, take our gold logo, our straw colored steel, and by application of heat, we're going to turn it blue. Nice color shift there. One thing I do like about fire bluing versus paint on daisies is that the uh, resolution of the print logo, the roll stamp logo on the top of the guns, looks a lot better and uh, doesn't fill with paint, so you retain those nice sharp letters. Looks as good as the day when it came off the showroom floor. All right, there we go. Get that rear sight. See how it's shifting? That gold is giving way to the uh, dark blue, which in turn turns into a light blue. And because of the way daisies are built, there's a several sections of the gun that have more steel in them than others, and we're fixing to roll up on that in just a minute. This is where the compression chamber is at, underneath that outer layer of steel. So it takes a little bit longer for it to get the heat level that we're looking for. As we roll In terms of processes, uh, there's processes that are a lot more intricate. This one is pretty easy to do. Uh, there's not so much of a barrier to getting started with fire blue because, well, I don't know anybody that doesn't have a propane torch. Now, it's always a good idea, I think, to go to uh, one of the big box retailers and buy propane in those uh, camping stove four packs because it's the same juice that you'll find at the uh, self-help stores, but it's a little bit better deal because you're getting a lot more gas for your buck. In terms of how many guns can you do with a green tank, I don't know, I couldn't give you a hard, hard number, but I'd say at least three, maybe four. Depends on how many times you actually have to go back and do it again. And I find that uh, on most of the fire blue that I do, and the first attempt is not always acceptable. And I'm kind of finicky that way anyway, so it's a small matter. And if you don't like the way it turned out the first time, to just take the, uh, let it cool of course, and then take it back to the wire wheel and knock the oxide off. It's not as difficult a thing, a very difficult thing to do. And go at it again. Another technique I've used in the past with some success is to give it a fire blue, let her set, get it chilled down, and then go back and do the same process again without pulling off the oxide. Now there I think we may have a color problem here. This might still be a bit strawish, but we'll know later after it's cooled down. And of course at this point in time you don't want to touch it. Let's uh, get around to the other side and get a shot of the logo and you can see just how sharp that is. But that is now a fire blue daisy number 111 model 40 receiver. 
and I think it looks as good as anything that came out of the factory. That's all for today, kids. This is Shane Bruce, Resto Mod Daisy, 